Here we go. Um, we have um, um, the topic today is the CI2, Vita Cross the 200 CI2 applications. Um, this will be uh, basically going over the various options you can do with the hardware and the software to, to match your piping system. Um, but what we're going to also do is we're going to cover some single boiler applications, some single boiler applications using specifically zone. Uh, circuits like multi-zone controls and uh, common um, uh, cascaded systems. Uh, the cascaded systems will, um, we won't, I won't do a lot of software on that because you need the commissioning agent of the, the V-Guide uh, software to do that. And uh, Curtis will handle that when we do commissioning startup. Uh, I'm just going to basically go over the, the fundamentals of the single boiler applications as far as what choices in the in the in the apps okay so we have uh, uh six boilers in this product line there are three um or four sorry four smaller boilers which you see are single burner uh units they're broken down into two basic groups so there's the the 399 and the 500,000 btu boiler which are essentially the same machine um, they have a different setting set up for the burner. We've got the uh, 750 and the 1 million um, boiler, which are, again, the same. They're a little bit deeper than the 500 and the 399. And then we have the dual burner versions, which are the well, 1.5 and the 2 million B2 versions. So, and they can be uh, cascaded together in any combination of sizes. We'll talk about that as we go along here. Uh, but you can see the turndown ratios are higher than they used to be. So we've got turndown ratios up to 30 to 1 on the 1.5 million, um, which is really going to help with um, those large variations in loads that you see in, in current buildings. Um, so we have the uh, basic information on them is there. You know, we'll talk about the one burner, the two burners. They're all 80 PSI pressure vessels. And they all have a 185 Fahrenheit or 85C maximum uh, adjustable limit or maximum set point. The uh, high limit safety, the lockout safety is at 210 or 99C. And these are all high mass boilers. So you see the content from 30 gallons on the smaller one, 50 on the middle one. And you see that with well, the 1.5 and the 2 million, even though they're the same uh, physical boiler, uh, pretty much there's a little bit of difference in the, um, the, um, the water volume because the 1.5 has less plates in the heat exchanger. So they have a smaller heat exchanger on the ones on the top. Um, we can cascade them up to 16 boilers now. So, and the cascade control is built into the boiler. So you could pick any one of the boilers in the group and make it the lead cascade. It becomes boiler number one. And then every other boiler in that group is a, is a lag boiler to that. Um, so we can go up to 16 boilers, including the lead cascade controlled boiler. Um, we can mix the capacities on those. So we can, we can mix, you know, a 399, a 2 million in, in the same system if you wanted to, or any combination of that. Uh, that's something we couldn't do in the previous Vietatronic. I mean, it was physically capable of doing it, uh, but the logic in the background uh, worked better when they were all the same. We, we, we can do it in multiple different uh, sizes now. Um, you can get with these boilers combustion air filters. Um, and we'll, we'll show a little bit about that in the, in the uh, installation um, webinar that, that Scott's going to do. Um, but they can be uh, monitored then. So that when the filter's dirty, it'll, it'll put a monitoring flag up in the software for that. Uh, you can common vent four boilers. If you're common venting, all of the boilers have to be the same BTU. So they can't common vent two different uh, capacities. Uh, we have BMS access through the gateway. The Wago gateway is a new gateway, so we're not using Vito, the Vito gate anymore for this system. Uh, one of the reasons why this is changing is that this entire control platform is built on a process we call CAN bus, uh, where we were using um, lawn previously. So CAN bus is a more robust, uh, higher security level, a little more flexible. Uh, if you want to know, uh, you know, <laughs> a CAN bus is not new. 
Um, if you have a car that's newer than 19, about 89, I think that it has CAN bus in it. And that's how the, the car parts inside talk to each other to the main computer in the car. So we're basically using the same logic and the same same uh, communication strategy is that because it's very flexible and you can you can do it multiple different ways so it also becomes more secure and it's easier to protect for from you know somebody getting in the back door that kind of stuff um it is bms compatible obviously through modbus or backnet and that's using the gateway this is a, a very low pressure drops uh, series of borders and this because it's high mass you can see the pressure drop is pretty low. So let's just take a look at um, some examples here of flow. And I've just based this flow based on 20 degree delta T and I'm using the basic formula that uh, for flow equals uh, capacity or energy in or out uh, over delta T times this constant, which is in water would be 500. And you can see that um, we, can, we have a very low pressure drop, even at the largest boiler at 200 GPM, the pressure drop is only about three and a half feet ahead. So it's very, very low pressure drop across the heat exchanger, uh, which is really going to help out with pumping and uh, especially when you're putting multiples and stuff together. Behind the whole thing is the control package. So the control is being very flexible. Like I said, they're using the CAN bus um, network now. Uh, we still have an internal VSPIN bus. We call it plus bus. So the plus bus is how all of the different all the different modules in the Wiesman world for mixing valves and all those other things talk to the boiler, as well as the Vita trolls, which we're using for the heating circuits. Um, but the networking between boilers and the networking to the gateway is done on CAN bus. Um, there are, um, is built into the boiler built in Wi Fi and LAN connection. Now, if you're familiar with the new 200 E series boilers, they have Wi Fi, but they don't have a LAN connection uh, because in Commercial boiler rooms, it's very iffy whether you can get a good Wi-Fi signal. There's a lot of metal, a lot of um, you know pumps or noise and that kind of stuff. So the the idea here is we you can do Wi-Fi, which which is nice for commissioning because you can wi hi hotspot right to the boiler, or it could be on the internet if you have that that wi uh, internet connection. Uh, but it can also be LAN. So it can be LAN connected to the building's internet. Uh, and again, a lot of commercial buildings they'd rather have it connected by LAN than through Wi-Fi because of the security and the passwords and things like that. So we, using that technology, we have two software apps that the contractor can use, VGuide Mobile and VGuide Web. Um, these are both uh, available from down, as download. Well, the VGuide Web is, is a web server. It's a web page, so it's not really download. But the VGuide Mobile gives us access to uh, either the boiler uh, remotely or locally uh, using a hotspot on, on the boiler directly. So in the gateway, we talk about Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, Mod BACnet IP, BACnet MSTP. These are all different versions of the, um, the gateway. Uh, one thing a little different than the older gateway is you have to know what you want ahead of time uh, because all of the gateways will be specific to the communication you're looking for. Um, so when we get into multiples, this is where we start seeing the CAN bus. Um, and you notice that Wi-Fi is only being used on the lead cascade boiler. So your, your Wi-Fi network's talking to the cascade boiler and then all of the other boilers are talking to the cascaded boiler. Uh, so we only have to set up the Wi-Fi on the lead boiler or the, or the LAN connection on the lead boiler. And again, we can use the VitaGuide mobile hotspot to talk directly to the system. And when you're doing cascading, uh, you have to use the app to cascade the boilers. You cannot cascade the boilers from the HMI in a cascaded system. You can do that on a single boiler, but in a multiple boiler, you need to use the, the app. The basic wiring in the back is done on a DIN rail. So this, all the connections on this boiler are on the back. So you have your, um, your um, DIN rail, you have your HMI, you have your water in and out, you have your drain, you have your vent, you have your, um, you know, all, the, all the access points are on the back of this boiler, which makes it nice in the mechanical room. You can put these boilers right back or side to side, as long as you leave clearance behind so you can get to them. <clears throat> so when we look at the DIN rail, this is the small boiler DIN rail, and this is the large boiler DIN rail. And where you see what we've done here is when you, on the smaller boiler, we go from 12 to 16. Because it's a single boiler unit, there's some ports in here we don't need. So to make the nomenclature for the field connections the same, whoops, wrong way. You see we have the other connections here for the larger boiler with the extra fuse for the second circuit and that kind of stuff. But all of our field connections still start at 16 to 29. That didn't change from the small boiler to the large boiler. For when you're connecting this boiler up 
to the to the field the electricians connecting things like the the pumps and low water cutoffs and things like that it's all the same terminal blocks uh, numbering system so that's consistent through all the, all six sizes the basic piping connections you've got a couple of choices here uh, we see systems with you know boiler pump on each boiler and and that's quite common but we also see systems that use a common pump for either the system or for the boiler group uh, in which case then you can put an isolation valve it's a it's a part open spring return valve that when the boiler is has a call for heat uh, if it's a lag boiler the cascade says hey we need you to run and it starts up uh, and then that valve opens so it isolates the boiler from that this is one of the reasons why we have to look at the the pressure drop across the boilers because if you're pumping water at a specific flow rate and you close an isolation valve on one of the group of boilers, that's gonna ac actually increase the head loss across the boiler. So using a variable speed pump, uh, if you're not using an individual boiler pump is, is a good idea to keep the head loss across the boiler consistent. Uh, like I said, we can cascade up to 16 boilers and common vent up to four in the common vented boilers, they all have to be the same capacity. So let's look at some application examples. We'll start out with the menu structure. So this is the menu structure you'll see in the HMI. So in the when you're programming the boiler from the local control, um, you'll have these choices come up in your structure. So you're going to boot this boiler up uh, from the HMI. You're going to go into the commissioning. You're going to say, I want it to be commissioned from the HMI. And then it's going to ask you a bunch of questions. So this is the basic menu structure you see here. So we'll look at this from an individual piece. So we have one, two, three, four heating circuits. Uh, the first one is, um, sorry, the first one is without mixing valve and the other four are with mixing valve. Uh, the, other, the other three are without mixing valve. So we have four in total. Now here we look at, we got four here. Where did the four come from? In the Vitatronic world, we only had three. So what we've done to this control, we've added one more mix circuit. So you could put one more mixing valve. So now you have the ability to do one unmixed circuit and three mixed circuits. Um, and the mixed and unmixed circuits be on the heating circuits, uh, these are compatible with the Vita trolls. So you can put up to two Vita trolls on the boiler or on the system. Uh, each Vita troll can talk to more than one um, heating loop or one more than heating circuit, but obviously the room sensor affects the the one that you're, you you make as where the, where the sensor is, okay? And then there's zone circuits. So this is new for our commercial boilers. We've had this in the Vito Dens um, boilers for uh, a couple of years now, a few years now uh, from the B2H series. Uh, and they are basically working with a thermostat or a dry contact to start stop these. So you see your choices are you don't use it or you have the thermostat, but you can also make any one of those three heating zones uh, a safety limit. So if you say, I want, I'm using all mixed circuits or I'm using all HC circuits, but I need a, an auxiliary low pressure gas switch because we're on propane and we want to make sure that we, we're, when the tank runs down, we don't run the boiler like that. You can hook that up to the safety, it, 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 to one of the heating zone inputs and flag it in your commissioning as a safety circuit. And then you'll get a fault and an alarm for that. There's also another input now. So we have the three zone circuits, but we have this 96 plug. And again, if you're familiar with the Vita Dens 100s and 200s currently, the 96 is basically a call for heat in the 100. So in this boiler here, you have some options. Uh, if you don't tell it what to do, it doesn't do anything. Uh, but it can be an external demand for domestic recirc as a push button function. So you, it, it close contact, temporary close contact starts it, temporary close contact stops it. Uh, it can be external demand with, um, just like it was in the previous uh, groups where we had a set point uh, that was in the programming. And when a contact closed, we use it as, as, a, as a set point. Again, it could be snow melt or something. Uh, external blocking, this is a way to shut the whole boiler down. So sometimes the BMS guys want a mechanical interlock to say, hey, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's May, we don't need to run eight boilers. We're gonna lock out you know, four, five, six, whatever they want. And just a dry contact to that boiler then will we'll say it doesn't do heating, doesn't do domestic, it doesn't do anything, sit, sit there and look good on the floor. And we've added this too as an additional call for heat. So when you call this a call for heat, in the control, it shows up as heating zone four. So now we have four heating zones. It's a little bit like 
external demand that functions are very similar, except as a call for heat, you can make it weather compensated or fixed set point, and it shows up in the main structure menu, so it's easier to get to the set points. We have these EA1 modules, uh, EME1 modules. You probably saw those in a couple of slides back. <clears throat> Currently, we don't have any applications for those in North America. Uh, we have an MZIO board built into the boilers for North America, which the Europeans don't have, so they need this. Um, there is some, uh, some questions we have going back to Germany saying, uh, we need to know all of the applications you, that you might use this for, and we'll see if there's anything we can do for it. But currently, there's nothing that we're using the EA1 module for. We also have the DHW group. So the DHW group is, again, no DHW or with a tank sensor or with a tank switch. So we can be a, the sensor, the, the thermistor that comes with the boiler, or it can be the aquastat that you might have on a tank that's existing in the building. So you just make that choice. Then we can also have the tank sensor with a research pump or a, an aquastat with a research pump. So again, you just pick this off the list. So how you've piped the boiler, the hardware you've put into the mechanical room, you just choose when you commission it what you've, what you've done, which makes it very simple, right? And same with low loss headers. We have no low loss header. We have low loss header. We have a low loss header upstream or with the DHW upstream of the low loss header. We have a low loss header with DHW downstream of the low loss header. This again is also new. You can use one boiler. Um, the boiler could be using uh, domestic hot water directly at the boiler or downstream of the low loss header, or you can be using uh, it um, uh, as a multiple system the same way. So the lead cascade boiler can do DHW on its own we call that local, or it can be done downstream of the low loss header, and it is global that all the boilers take it, take a, you know, have the ability to make DHW. And we also give you the option of the buffer tank. So there's a slight difference in the algorithms between low loss header and a buffer tank because a buffer tank has more mass. Uh, this I don't see we'll probably use a whole lot with the high mass boiler, uh, but it was important with the Vitadens because we need maybe to, in some systems to bring the mass up. So we've added this and it's the same, the E3 platform or the Wiesmann one base platform uses the same logic for the whole system. It makes it um, uh, less spare parts and that kind of thing. So uh, this is why we have this buffer tank. Now, if you want to put a buffer tank on the CA, CI2, you can do that. Then we also have a choice of whether we use the boiler pump or not. If we're using a, um, a system where the system pumps are operating the boilers and controlling those, then we could say no boiler pump. So we can say no boiler pump or we have a boiler pump. If we have a boiler pump, we can decide whether it's a variable speed pump or a on off pump. And if you say variable speed pump, there's a zero to 10 output in this control to operate the pump. And there's a few different ways that you can configure that. So one of the questions we got last time when we did this group was, what's the difference between a heating circuit and a heating zone? You can see in this previous drawing, we have heating zone, heating circuits over here, we have heating zones over there. What's the difference between the two? So let's just take a quick look at that. We have a heating circuit is the Wiesmann traditional way we've done things. So Wiesmann has had the heating circuit concept, one unmixed, multiple mixed circuits. We've done that for several years you know, um, all the way back to Decomatic or before. Uh, and this is really how the Wiesmann European uh, network works. What we added for the North American boilers in the last generation of Vitadens was a heating zone uh, because we got lots of people saying, we want to start and stop the boiler from a, from a remote device. And the heating circuits were really designed to be uh, operating all the time. So with a heating circuit, it's what we called constant circulation. So anytime it's below the warm weather shutdown, the pump starts and it runs to the outdoor reset curve traditionally, although now you can do a fixed set point. Uh, so it, and it ran all winter long, the pump ran and it just opened and closed zone valves or whatever, or, or operated the, the three-way mixing valve for the heating circuits with mixed circuits. Uh, and it maintained water temperature all the time. But we also now in the heating zones have the ability to start and stop the, the, that loop from a dry contact, mostly a thermostat. So it works more like a traditional North American thermostat functions. Thermostat closes, that heating circuit gets a call for heat. It goes to whatever set point has been given, uh, whether it's weather compensated or fixed. And it goes on about its merry little way and it does its thing and its pump runs. And when the thermostat opens, uh, basically there's a, a, everything shuts down in that loop. The 
heating circuits are not designed to be start stop like that. They are designed to operate continuous circulation. You can put the Vita trolls, uh, controls to those heating circuits, but the Vita control is a different than a thermostat. The Vita control changes the set point calculation based on how close it is to the room temperature. And ultimately, if you have it set up right, you can maintain the space temperature like right at the temperature you want it to be, as opposed to with a thermostat opening and closing, there's that drift from differential on and off, right? Um, so there's diff just different ways to do that. Uh, again, the heating zones are designed to be start and stop with an external thermostat. The heating circuits have schedules built into them. The heating zones don't have any schedules because we're going to assume if you're going to hook up a thermostat to it, the schedule is going to be in the thermostat. HC1, heating circuit one, is a non-mixed, and heating circuit two to four are mixed circuits, so they have mixing valves and they require the mixing valve modules. Heating uh, zone circuits one to four are always non-mixed. If you want to um, drop the temperature in a heating zone, you need to use uh, like a thermostatic mixing valve or a third-party valve or something like that. Um, heating um, the circulators are, can be selected for the heating circuit one and the heating circuits two to four. The circulators for those groups are connected to the mixing valve module. And on the zone circuits, the heating zones, um, the pump outputs are assigned automatically. So zone input one is assigned to zone pump one, et cetera. DHW priority can be enabled and disabled on heating circuits. And DHW priority is always priority it's not not switchable in the zone circuit so that's the basic basic differences between the two so let's go back and look at how we set the boiler up so let's say we want to do uh, a mix or a heating circuit one and we can decide when we do the commissioning one of the first questions it asks you is are you doing oops where did I go? are you doing weather compensation but too far there we go Weather compensation. And the choice is weather compensation or not weather compensation. So when you say weather compensation, all of your heating circuits are weather compensated. Okay. You can decide whether you want the heating zones to be weather compensated or not. So even though you said in the this part here, weather compensated, um, if you didn't say weather compensated here, all your heating circuits would be fixed set point. But as soon as you say weather compensated, they're all going to be weather compensated. But the heating zones, even if you said weather compensated during the commissioning, the default is going to be all of these heating zones are weather compensated, but the zones can be switched back to continuous set point or fixed set point uh, by going to the right coding address, the right VDD address, and switching it from weather compensated to continuous operation. Well, continuous operation means fixed set point. So weather compensated, all the heating circuits are weather compensated and heating zones, you can switch them to heating weather compensated or not, okay? So let's look at some single boiler applications. This is a basic installation. We've got one heating zone. We've got domestic hot water. We've got the boiler. You see, we don't have any primary secondary. And in this scenario, we wouldn't need it. This high mass boiler would be able to do that without primary secondary. Uh, all of this comes back to the boiler. So all of these pumps you see here all come back to the control that's attached to the boiler. And we don't have a specific boiler pump. So in this case, we'd say no boiler pump because we're going to use a zone pump, a zone a heating zone for this group. So we have a thermostat or some dry contact that's going to start stop it from a BMS system or something. And we have a zone pump. Now, in this case here, our domestic priority, remember, is, is always enabled with a zone circuit or heating zone. So we have the domestic pump, we have the zone pump. When we switch to domestic hot water, then this pump starts and this pump stops and it continues to do that until the tank is uh, satisfied or we run into the, the uh, program timeout function, which, which again, they'll talk about in, in a, a next, next webinar, next couple of webinars. And we also have the research pump, which comes back to the board. Now the research pump, we can put on a schedule. We can put the domestic on a schedule. But remember the schedules here, because it's a zone, are done in the thermostat. Okay, so let's look at, there's the, there's the piping layout. How do we electrically connect it? Well, we have the input from our thermostat 
into zone input one, we have the zone pump one. Remember, this is automatically assigned. A zone circuit heating zone has an input and then a pump output that's directly connected to it. Over here, we have an outdoor air sensor. If we're looking at outdoor temperature, we can, we can do weather compensated then, right? We have the domestic input at number five, and it can be the sensor or the aquastat. And because we're using this, we're going to use a domestic pump and a domestic repump connected to here. So P1 and P2 are the domestic circuit in this case. And zone pump one is the heating circuit, the heating zone for this case. Over here, we have the low water cutoff. This is, a, this is the standard in rail connection. And because it's a single boiler, we have a jumper between 19 and 18 because we don't need a common vent in a single boiler application. So this is the jumper that says we don't need to look for the, um, the proof of uh, vent damper switch. So what are we checking on here? So remember we had all this software we had a choice of. So we'd say not available, not available, not available, not available. We have domestic hot water. So we had the choice of domestic hot water with one sensor with a circulator pump or domestic hot water with a, ta with a tank sensor with a switch, right? So we have, we have the sensor or the switch. Then we have low less header. We don't have one, so we say not available. Over here, we have one heating zone. So we say on that one, we have a thermostat. All the other ones, we say not available, not available. We had 96 isn't using it, so we say no function. And over here, we said no boiler pump. And those are the only choice questions we had to answer, right? We said, we said over here, we said we, what we had here, we had no low less header, and we do, we do not have a boiler pump. So that then ties right to this system here, exactly like it's laid out. So this one's similar, but it's a little different in that instead of a zone, heating zone, we're using a heating circuit here. So this is again, more the Vespin traditional way. We've got the Vitatrol, and here we have a, call it a heating pump because it's not a zone pump anymore. This is the same, but because I'm using one of the pump outputs for this point, if I want a domestic recirc, I need to get the EAA, uh, EAP1 ADIO module. So here now we see the electrical for that. So we don't have a zone input. We don't have a zone pump. And the pump here that was being used for the heating, uh, the domestic recirc is now assigned as the heating pump. Domestic tank loading pump is here. And then this module here does the recirc pump. And again, if I want, because it's a heating circuit, I can put the Vitatrol on it. So from the boiler control to the EMP1 module to the Vitatrols is done on the plus bus. And then the this module here, we set the, if it's all by itself, if it's the only module, we set the address at one. Uh, if we were doing a mixed circuit as well, then we'd have, this would be one higher than whatever the mixed circuit we're using is. Um, and over here, nothing's changed. Everything's the same here. But what are my choices here? Well, because I'm using a heating circuit without a mixing valve, for the first heating circuit, I'm going to say, yes, I'm using this one, heating circuit without mixing valve. Two, three, and four, not available. Again, no low loss header. And the domestic is, is with a research pump, either with a sensor or without. And again, no low loss header. Over here, we got no available for any of the zones, no available for, for this. And we cannot, we can now use the, the Vita trolls because we have a heating circuit. We can use the heating troll for that. And we still don't have a boiler pump. So the difference between the last example and this one is the last example, we're using the heating zone and this one we're using a heating circuit. So let's look at this application. Again, a third option of this. This is still using a heating zone, or sorry, a heating circuit, but we're using a mixed circuit. Why would we do this? Well, we're looking at a boiler that's making domestic hot water in this. If this is a lower temperature loop, then when the boiler goes to domestic as a priority, the boiler's going to get as hot as it needs to to make this tank hot. And because it's a high mass boiler, maybe we take the chance of that energy is going to end up in here when it finishes making domestic hot water, the boiler's going to be a little warmer than maybe we want it to be for the lower temperature system. So the mixed circuit then allows us to set a set point and use the variable uh, motor here, the three-speed mixing valve to, to modulate. And this, so this ADIO module is the mix module. It comes with the motor for the mixing valve. You get the mixing valve accessory that matches the size of valve you want. 
It has a pump, which is driven by this module. It has a temperature sensor, which is driven by this module. And so this will always maintain the loop. Doesn't matter what the boiler water temperature is, it'll maintain this loop at the right temperature based on whatever you're using as a set point. So now instead of the EMP1 module, we're using EMM1 module, which is a mixed circuit module. So again, it connects on the 74 bus, the plus bus. We put the V control on we want, but you see what's different here. We have a temperature sensor. We have a pump. And we have a mixing valve driver up and down or open and closed. So over here, we have the research pump and the domestic pump. So we didn't have to use up that P1 module because the pump for that mix circuit is here. So that's a, just a different choice. And again, we're going to set this address at one because there's only the one of them. If I had this and a P1 module, the P1 module would have to be set at two, but we're not using the P1 module in this application. So what are my choices now? Well, heating circuit one, we're not using, and this is new. We always used to have to have heating circuit one all the time. So what did we do? And we had a mixed circuit without a high temperature circuit or a zone circuit without a high temperature circuit. We always went into the programming. We set the heating curve as low as it would go. We set the room temperatures as low as they would go. We turned off all the schedules and that's how we made this circuit not do anything. Now we don't have to do any of that. We just say we aren't using it, all right? And what we've done is heating circuit two, because it's a mixed circuit, we're gonna enable that. So there's mixed circuit two, three and four we're not using. Again, the domestic is the same with the tank sensor, uh, no low loss header, no heating zones, no 96. I can use the Vita troll on a heating circuit too, so I can use that and no boiler pump. So very little difference between the last one and this one, other than we took, instead of using heating circuit one, we use heating circuit two. Now here's a little different now we've added the primary secondary. So there's my low loss header, my boiler now needs a pump and downstream of the low less headers where I've installed the domestic. So it's a zone heating zone. So again, priority is gonna turn this pump on and turn this pump off. And it's water is gonna go to the set point for DHW. When the DHW is satisfied, it's gonna turn this pump off and turn this pump back on if there's a call for heat. And the boiler is going to um, go back to the heating zone set point. Now we have the choice now if we could take, in this example here, we had the domestic downstream. Now the domestic is upstream. So now in a domestic priority function, we're turning the boiler pump off and turning the domestic pump on. And this pump here is just gonna do whatever it does. You know, if, it's, if it's trying to make heat, heat's not getting this way because the boiler's not making hot water. So the pump's gonna run and it's not gonna heat the, the space other than what's in the, the low less header or a buffer tank. And again, this might be a reason why we use a buffer tank because then we can get a few minutes of load out of this uh, in that scenario. So electrically, we have the zone input, we have a zone pump. We have the um, low loss header sensor now, which we didn't have before. Outdoor air temperature sensor, the domestic choice, research pump, domestic pump. And over here, we added the boiler pump. So there's power to the boiler pump and there's this 2829, which is a zero to 10 signal. If I decided I wanted that boiler pump to be variable speed, I would just be able to say, uh, we want a variable speed and this is how we're gonna control it in the, in the software options. So no heating circuits, so all null available. Domestic's the same as it was on the previous examples, but now I have a low loss header. <clears throat> so, in example two, my low loss header was downstream of the, of the DHW is downstream of the low loss header. I have a one heating zone, so a thermostat connection and not available, not available, no function. I have a boiler pump and I decide whether it's variable speed or on off. Now in example three, the domestic was upstream of the low loss header. So instead of saying downstream, I would say upstream. And the reason why I do that remember is for managing the pumps. We're gonna switch the pumps here and here, or we're gonna switch the pumps here and here on the domestic call. And if you make the wrong choice in commissioning, you can just go back to commissioning. Okay, now we have a more advanced circuit. Now we have one high temperature circuit and three mixed circuits. In this case here, our high temperature circuit is using a zone heating zone. And of course, our mixed circuits are using heating circuits. 
We still have domestic and recirc. We have a boiler pump and we have a low loss header and our domestic is downstream of the low loss header. Now, the problem we're gonna have here is um, DHW priority can be switched for these, but not for this. We put the DHW upstream of the low loss header and now these are doing whatever they're gonna do and the domestic is switching back and forth here. So we have the priority for everything. So that's a choice we make in where we pipe it. And because we have multiple mix circuits, right? We have one, two, three mix circuits. We have one, two, three EMM1 mixing modules. This one's set at one, that one's set at two, that one's set at three on the addressing. If you set them all at one, they're, they're, they're all the same name. Um, if you name all your kids the same name, you're gonna have trouble getting them to do anything. Um, well, it might make it easier when, you, when you're mad at them and you, they've done something wrong. Because if you have two kids of the same name, they just jump up and go, wow. I, you know, we called my George name. Foreman did that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was simple for him, right? Hard for the kids. My 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 parents named my oldest my older brother the same as my dad, and that was a nightmare for mail when they started getting mail because it was always K Norris. <laughs> and uh, sometimes my brother didn't want my dad to open his mail. That's a whole other story. Okay, so M1 modules we've got three of them because we have three mixing valves. We have a zone input, so zone input thermostat, zone pump, domestic is the same. We have the common supply sensor. I didn't show this on the previous examples, but this is a zero to 10 input that we could use to control the boiler set point. So it would get a set point from these. It would get a set point from this, but we could also send a set point from the, the building automation system, the BMS system is a zero to 10. Uh, this could also be programmed now as burner modulation as opposed to just set point. And uh, again, we'll talk a little more about that in, in, in uh, later webinars. And now again, we have the boiler pump. So what am I choosing? I'm not choosing heating circuit one. I am choosing heating circuit two, three, and four, which are mixed. My domestic choices are the same. My DHW downstream of the lowest header. I have one zone circuit, so I'm using that. Not available, not available, not available. I have a boiler pump and I can decide whether there's variable speed. And for example, four, Example five, the boiler, the DHW is upstream. So that's the only choice difference I made between those two designs. The piping was the same, except for where the DMHW was. The hardware was the same for the number of pumps. So we have to just decide where we want to put things. So let's look at some examples with multi-zone controls, because we see a lot of that in these um, uh, systems where the uh, you know, maybe you have a, on a small apartment building or a medium sized apartment building doesn't have BMS, but it has uh, apartments with the zone valves or pumps to each area or punch to each apartment, whatever it is. And they're using a third party um, multi zone control to drive the, the loops. And we need to interact with the border to do that a little bit. Um, so we're going to show some systems that have those things. So in this case here, we have a boiler with a zone pump so we know this is going to be a zone circuit the way we programmed the way we piped it and each of the four zones in the multi-zone building are going to be controlled by a zone valve and the zone valve is controlled by a multi-zone control so from the boiler's perspective it sees one contact input says i need to make heat turn the pump on go to whatever set point is assigned to that zone circuit heating zone and these valves will open and close. So the room thermostats are connected to the multi-zone control, which drives the valves open and close. If any valve opens or close, it opens because of a call for heat, then it closes the contact here and the boiler says make heat. So one of my choices here, again, everything out here, we're not using domestic this time. So we got no domestic, we got no low loss header, but we do have one heating zone and we don't have anything here and we have no boiler pump. Why do we have no boiler pump? because we're using this input, there's the pump that's heating the circuit. So that pump there gets a call anytime any of these zone calls, so it's gonna be uh, an operational pump. Now, you probably wanna make this, depending on how your piping system is, you probably wanna make this a Delta P pump because as these zone valves open and close, the head loss across the pump's gonna change. Uh, unless you 
uh, hydraulically balance all these systems uh, and put a pressure bypass or something like that in, you're going to need to do some pump speed control uh, so that you don't uh, create excessive pressure drop in your system. Well, here's another example, and, and all these examples have numbers on them. Don't get too hung up on the numbers. These numbers were assigned when we were trying to develop these things. Uh, in the uh, vPlan uh, software, you, it's going to be available uh, to do uh, pro project design. They'll have different numbers than these. Uh, so these are just the way the examples that we made them up. They, we did the zone circuits afterwards, so that's why I did the or the, the multi-zone controls afterwards. That's why they have a different number. Okay, so in this case here, we already have the zone valves. We know that but we put the domestic hot water system on it now. Now the domestic hot waters, there's no low loss header, so it's directly connected to the boiler. So remember the priority is gonna be here and here. So there's gonna be no heat going to these loops when it's in domestic mode, because that pump's gonna start, stop, and this one's gonna start. Electrically, they're pretty much the same, except now we've added the domestic system. So we domestic heat, domestic research, uh, other than that, this is the same layout as we had in the previous example. So what are we doing? We're choosing, we're choosing the, the domestic and the thermostat input and everything else is not used. Now here we do primary secondary with a very similar system. So now my zones are downstream of the low less header and my domestic is upstream of the low less header. So now I have a boiler pump and I have a domestic pump and I have a zone pump. So the multi-zone control is going to say, hey, make the pump go, make some heat. But in domestic mode, this is going to shut off and this is going to turn on. And when the tank is satisfied, then this is going to turn on and this is going to turn off. So when it's in domestic mode, we don't get any heat past this point. So that pump's just basically going to pump on a circuit because it's not part of the priority loop. Now, if we put the domestic tank downstream of the lowest header, again, remember we had that choice. The boiler pump has to run for both domestic and for heating. So our priority now is zone pump off, domestic pump on. Electrically, you see they're very similar. The only difference is now because we had primary secondary, we had the we added the boiler pump. Everything else here is the same as it was before. So again, no heating circuits, domestic hot water. We have domestic upstream of the lowest header, an example, uh, EX3. Uh, thermostat for con for the uh, heating zone, and we have boiler pump, fixed speed or not, and then for four, we just move it downstream of the low loss header. So very, very similar applications, very few changes. What about this one? Now we have a multi-zone control that's going, doing pumps. I do not need a boiler pump anymore. I do not need a zone pump anymore. This system is going to have its own pumps. They We can do this because the pressure drop on this boiler is very low. So if one pump turns on or two pumps turns on or three pumps turn on or four pumps turn on, the boiler can deal with that because the varying flow through the boiler is going to maybe change the delta T a little bit, um, but it's not going to uh, not going to cause a problem with overhead because the, the, uh, the boiler has a very low pressure drop. So now we're using the zone control to drive pumps instead of valves. So that's, everything's the same except it's driving a pump and it's coming to the zone circuit one. Now, you know that's gonna automatically connect to zone pump one, but we're not gonna use that. There's no zone pump because there's pumps here. So what we're doing in this case here is it's gonna have power on it. We're just not using it. And again, we make a zone circuit or heating zone and we say no boiler pump. Now, this is a little different in that the domestic is added to it. So now we have um, a um, priority, potential priority issue because there's no domestic priority as far as the flow goes. We're not controlling this pump. The multi-zone control is controlling this pump. But domestic is priority um, on, a, on a heating zone. Uh, so we have now a domestic pump that's going to, water's going to go to the set point and that pump's going to start, which means that these pumps don't know that happened and they're going to continue to run. So we're going to have them try to do everything simultaneously, which might be okay other than where our set points are. So we, again, we have nothing connected to zone pump one. We have the pumps driven from here. We've added the domestics. We have the two pumps for the domestic. Now we could have done this as a heating circuit instead of a zone circuit, but there's really no way to 
start and stop a heating circuit from the multi-zone control. So that's why it's a zone circuit. So what have we done differently here? We have domestic, we still don't have a low less header and we're not using a boiler pump. Now, if I want to get the priority back, I can do something like this and use a multi-zone control that has a priority zone. So now in this scenario here, the multi-zone control that we've chosen has two outputs, one for the regular um, input and one for the priority input. Thermostats close or the tank aquastat closes. And if the thermostats are closing, the tank aquastat is open, these pumps here will run. The contact closes across here to the zone pump, zone input one. Again, we're not using the zone pump because these are driven by pumps. And if I have a call for domestic, on this box here is going to deal with the priority. So this box here is going to say, hey, I have I have a call for, for the priority zone, which is our domestic in this case. It's going to shut these pumps off and turn that pump on and send a different signal to the number five input, which is we programmed as an aquastat. And that way now we have priority back, but the multi-zone control is dealing with the priority from the flow perspective and the boiler is dealing with the priority from the set point perspective. So what are our choices here? We have domestic and we have a zone, heating zone, but other than that, the electrical programming is the same. Now we put domestic with a low less header upstream and we have the same uh, kind of scenario with it with priority issue. These are gonna run and this is gonna run on domestic priority the boiler pump is going to run for both applications because we're going to tell the tank it's downstream of the low less header. So we we have our issues with priority again. If I do it this way, I can see that I have my zone control, I have my domestic, and now I have a boiler pump. So thermostat, and now we say a boiler pump. Now here in this case here, what we've done is we've taken the piping is connected there, but we're using that same priority thing in the um, multi-zone control. So the boiler doesn't see priority except for the set point. Flow is managed by here. So again, very similar to what we had before. We have one zone going to the domestic, the priority zone, and the non-priority zones are going to the heating zone, and the boiler pump runs in either case. And these pumps run based on what the zone uh, multi-zone control wants. So difference in choices is we have a boiler pump and we have domestic and we have the domestic downstream of the low loss header. <clears throat> now we had no low loss header before, right? So now we say it's downstream of the low loss header. So now we move the domestic upstream of the low loss header. I can get my priority back without having to worry about what these things are doing. So I have a domestic priority that is also its flow and its temperature. So that pump shuts off, this pump turns on on domestic priority, and we, many, we make the boiler make heat for the domestic, and then we switch it back over here when the heating is, uh, is back enabled. And these pumps here are gonna do whatever they're gonna do um, in the priority zone or in the priority domestic priority, even though I have an input here, the boiler's going to go to domestic set point uh, and it's gonna shut off the uh, boiler pump and turn on the domestic pump. So these zones here will give the boiler a call for heat. We'll be able to see that in the control that there's a call for heat from the multi-zone control, but we'll also see that it's actually doing domestic hot water. So the choices here, the domestic is upstream of the low loss header. And that was the di big difference between those two applications. So looking at a bigger picture in a single boiler application, this is kind of how it's all put together. <clears throat> we have the ability to do everything you see here with controls that are built into the boiler or with the accessories for the boiler. So I can do zone circuit one, two, and three. I can do heating circuit one unmixed, heating circuit two, three, and four mixed. And one of the things we didn't look at previously was the use of that 96 input. So if we go back and look at the wiring diagram, we see that there's this 96 input here, which we didn't use. But we see that the programming for 96 can be no function or the domestic in, uh, 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 temporary push button or external demand blocking or call for heat. So we're gonna use this as call for heat in the application or as external demand in the application. Uh, there we go. So we can do, and, and if I say it's a call for heat, it shows up on the control of zone circuit four or heating zone four. 
So everything you see here, with the exception of this pump, can be controlled by the boiler. Now, this might be a snow melt system or something like that. That's going to have its own pump, its own heat exchanger, blah, blah, blah. And we don't really need a pump for this. So we have all the heating systems. We have a snow melt system. We have domestic hot water. And we didn't have to buy any third-party controls. It's all controlled by the Wiesman system, which means I can see all of this information uh, um, from uh, a network connection through a gateway or, or whatever. Now let's look at multiple multiple boiler systems. And again, from here on, I'm not going to give you the programming side of it because that's done in the app. And Curtis is going to go through the app when we do the um, uh, startup commissioning webinar in a in a few days. So I'm going to basically give you the, the the nitty gritty of the different ways we pipe a commercial system. One of the things we see really common nowadays is what we call variable primary. Now variable primary system. What makes it unique is that the pumps that are controlled in the building are not controlled by the boiler and they really don't care what the boiler needs or wants. They are being run based on the heating equipment in the building that needs flow. Not necessarily that needs temperature, but needs flow. So in a bigger commercial building, you might have you know, a bunch of different air handlers <clears throat> and the BMS system will say, we've got one air handler running, we've got 10 air handlers running. And they're going to run those pumps at a variable speed to different speeds, depending on how much hardware is actually needing water. So in those cases here, what happens in the boiler is if we didn't do anything to manage this flow here, we might have a lot of flow with very little BTUs needed or a lot of BTUs with very little flow needed. And that would mean that our boilers are going to operate different. We're going to put zone isolation valves on each boiler. So when the cascade control looks at the common supply sensor and says, hey, we need to make heat, we're, 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 we're set point that the BMS has given me or the set point that I'm calculating from out to reset, uh, doesn't matter either way, um, is getting low, we're going to start up a boiler or a bunch of boilers up to 16 boilers, and we're gonna open up their isolation valves and we're gonna make heat to those scenarios. Now. Remember, in a cascaded system in a condensing boiler, that it's not unusual to see a bunch of boilers all running in low fire because that optimizes the condensing process. So we have in this case here, we'll have a, maybe one boiler running, but the pump's running at a whole pile of water because they got a whole bunch of equipment needing flow. And what happens in that case there is I don't need these boilers for heat, so their isolation valve is closed, but I need a lot of water, so I have the potential to over-pump this boiler. When we over pump it, we're going to increase the head loss. We're also going to reduce the delta T. Uh, it's not a very efficient way to do things. So what we install here instead to help it is a pressure bypass. And the pressure bypass will throttle itself based on how many, how, what the pressure drop across this is. And the pressure drop across this will change depending on how many valves are open. So the, some of the water will be going directly to the boiler and back out. And some of the water will be bypassing here so that we don't have uh, over pumping the boiler. So this is something that we, we see we need to add to the um, variable primary systems because the pumps are being controlled by the building for the building equipment, not for the boilers. And in this case here, we also have domestic hot water. So again, we're not gonna have a great deal of control over the priority here because we don't have control over any of this. So this is a little different scenario in that we've taken the domestic and we've put it onto the lead boiler. So now I can have my priority because this boiler here will go to domestic and these boilers here should continue on to do heating. Again, we do the variable speed or variable pressure bypass because these pumps are controlled, the speed controlled by the building. Uh, and now we have domestic able to do on one boiler and we have the um, scenario here where the rest of the boilers are gonna produce heating. Uh, this boiler is gonna go to the domestic set point. This boilers, these boilers are gonna do whatever the heating set point is and run as many as they need to do that. So electrically, what do we have? We have the lead boiler, which has the isolation valve and it has the domestic controls in it. The outdoor temperature sensor if we want it, the zero to 10 if we want it. Um, but over here, these boilers here 
don't have anything connected to the MZIO board because that's all done on the lead boiler. What these have is the isolation valves. Now, what's the things I've added to this? It's hard to see in this drawing. I don't know. Maybe I can zoom this in a little bit. We have a vent damper. And the reason why we use the vent damper is because with these boilers, if we come and vent them, we have to add the vent damper to it so that flue gas doesn't go down a boiler that's not being used. Um, and so the vent damper is an accessory. Uh, it, it goes into the venting system and connects to the um, um, connects to the, the boiler, and each boiler has one. So now we've done, we've done in this scenario is it's primary, secondary. So the examples we had before were variable primary. This one's primary, secondary. So we have the low loss header and we have the domestic stream downstream of the low loss header. So again, we call this a global DHW, which means that any, any or all boilers will be available and making domestic hot water. And we have the system, which is, again, we don't control this. So uh, this would be a scenario where we uh, wouldn't want necessarily to have priority because the system wants them to run together. Uh, and we can do that because we, we have a power of all of the boilers to do the work. So domestic is not a priority to the pumps in the system. Again, if we want priority on the domestic hot water, we can put it on that local boiler, uh, on the Cascade lead boiler, and then we get the priority back. The rest of the boilers can be doing heating. Uh, again, from a pipe or electrical perspective, everything that's in the field is connected to the lead boiler. We do have a boiler pump on each boiler, and we have a boiler pump on each boiler because we're using primary secondary. So they have a boiler pump, boiler pump, boiler pump. Now here's a scenario where we don't have a boiler pump on each boiler. We have a common primary loop pump. So we have the boiler pump here. Uh, not, we don't use a boiler pump here. We use the isolation valves. And we're going to run this pump as a variable speed pump. We can do this as a command to start and stop. So if any boiler needs heat, it tells that pump to start and stop. And then the variable speed control is typically done by a uh, Delta P pump or a BMS controlled pump to maintain the speed to get the right pressure drop across the system. So we went big primary loop here, low loss header, domestic is downstream of the low loss header. So again, we don't have the domestic priority. If we do that same scenario with the tank on the lead boiler, we get the domestic priority back. Electrically, isolation valves instead of boiler pump, and what we're doing for the boiler pump is we're connecting a command to the boiler pumps from the lead boiler, right? And this boiler is gonna say, hey, we need to make circulation here because the boilers need to go. Uh, and so that's why we have a boiler pump and an isolation valve on the lead boiler. I think that's the end of my, oh, wow, I'm early today. I must have talked fast. Well done. Do we have any questions? I see one here. There was one, but Scott got to it quickly. There's, was one regard <laughs> There's another one in here. Be careful. Oh. To the Would the header supply here. water temperature set point still be maintained if the lead cascade boiler is offline? Okay. If the lead cascade boiler is offline, um, the cat this the lag boilers will continue to give do whatever their last set point was. If if the lead boiler is, is being serviced so you've you're the it still has power the control is still working but it won't run let's say it's say it's off on a failure like flame failure or low water cutoff or whatever it is the cascade continues to function and it will operate the lead boilers to that set point that's going to change by whatever happens uh, but if the lead boiler is physically powered down or it doesn't have any any ability to, to to tell the boilers what to do the lag boilers will continue to do what they were told to do last as far as the set point goes and that's and new too, because the old gold system, the boilers used to just sit there and wait for mom to tell them what to do. The other question was regarding whether this, this is replacing the CM2. Eventually, the yes. Yes, it is replacing the CM2, but we've been told that it will not, they won't be discontinuing the CM2 until there's good production of this boiler. 
Yeah. The, the issue that we, us and everybody else is having is, do we have enough, can we have enough of resources to make these boilers in the quantities that we want to make them in? So uh, I know we've, there's the delay is in the, in the release of these boilers has been pushed back a few times because of lack of available resources, parts and materials. Um, and then we're not unique to that, right? Everybody knows that, that, that people are having trouble. The, the, the pandemic has messed up the supply chain really, really bad. And even if we could get the parts to make the boilers, we can't get containers to ship them because there's a shortage of containers around the world because they're all stuck in ports that don't have any shipping. Um, so this is a problem that we've had. So we, we as a company have decided to continue making CM2 until there's enough production of CI2 that we don't need it anymore, and then they'll they'll eliminate it. But in, in the meantime, we'll have the availability of both boilers based on stock. So the other, other question is, up. if you don't want DHW priority, single boiler, do not use zone pumps. Is that correct? I think you want to, not necessarily the pumps, is just don't want to use zone circuits. Yeah, you want to, don't use a zone circuit because a zone circuit is always has domestic as its priority. If you if you don't want um, if you if you want prior, domestic priority, then you'd have to use a heating circuit. Um, and if you want to, um, the heating circuit would happen. And depending on how you've piped it, you might need a pump for it, right? But it's going to switch the priority on the pump. It, you could you could use a zone circuit and get domestic priority if you put the zone circuit downstream of the low less header. And that we'd have priority, but you cannot take the priority away. Well, we're going to, uh, Scott's going to take the next load and he's going to do application installation stuff. So we're going to, uh, yeah. I, ta I talked about how do you do it? He's going to say, here's how you, here's how you actually physically do it. <laughs> hold my, hold my beer. Yeah. Hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Famous last words. Hey.